I want to welcome you to Comic Spot. I'm the Meshugana lady who used to try to do five to ten interviews a day. I'm sure you remember. Oh, Lordy, I don't know what I was thinking. But, you know, I took some time out because uh, I was having shoulder pain. Turns out you can die. It can be a deadly thing causing shoulder pain. Turns out I'm so lucky. It's just degenerative arthritis and tendonitis, you know? Who doesn't want two new diagnoses for the price of one visit, you know? I'm winning, winning again. So this isn't even my comedy. I'm thinking this up on the fly because I'm so talented. But the thing is, is we are here today to honor the life the legacy of a, somebody I think is adorable. He's so likable, so nice, so sweet. This is the kind of guy every mother wished that she'd give birth to. <laughs> this guy is so cool, under pressure, dealing with me. He's the Miami Heat fan. Oh my gosh. So I'm going to introduce you with the intro that Evan Morgenstern wrote about himself. You know, he didn't, I don't think he even, yeah, he did. He talked about himself in the third person, but he's not crazy. Stick with me, folks. Don't <laughs> run away. We're comics. We're all cuckoo. <laughs> so Evan Morganson sent me his intro, and I'll quote him. Evan Morganstern is a voiceover actor and comedy performer who spent years dazzling New York City clubs like Caroline's, Gotham Comedy Club, as well as performing improv with various hot troops around the city. Hot troops. Ah, that sounds good. With various hot troops. I read it right. I did. Evan currently resides, for all you stalkers, <laughs> he currently resides. Where did I leave off? Evan currently resides in New Jersey. Oh, oh man. He left me in but he grew up in Miami and prides himself on being the best and really only good thing to come out of Florida. He has a podcast and a YouTube channel, and you got to get out there and support him on Facebook, YouTube, on his podcast. And I had the name of his podcast. It's called The Virgin Chronicles. And on YouTube, it's Evan Morgenstern with E's, no A's. Thank Evan you. Morgan Stern, Morning Star. <laughs> yes. <laughs> welcome uh, to Comic Spot for the second time. Yay! <laughs> thank you. And thank you for the warm welcome. And, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> uh, it, you know, I get the A's in the Morgan Stern so often. So <laughs> 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 people will be oh, reading it and they'll still decide that it must be incorrect. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's Morgan Stern like Rhoda, which. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, real, I, I figure there is a, um, a difference in audiences who will get that, but <laughs> yes, yes. What are you drinking? <laughs> oh, had a little uh, bourbon to, you know. <laughs> nice. What's your favorite bourbon? Uh, probably Maker's Mark or, um, no, that's probably it. Yeah. <laughs> they cool. didn't pay me to say that. I wish they would, but you know. <laughs> it could happen just because of being on Comic Spot. <laughs> right. Yes, yes. I mean, that's why I'm here. That's it. <laughs> to get my endorsements. I drink Dollar Tree coffee. I could maybe get a grocery cart full of junk. You know, they, you never know. <laughs> you never know. That's, um, you know, they, that's, I, I hear that uh, coffee is big for uh, web series and podcasts. So that's, you know. Yes. So I assume that there's a couple years difference between you and me. I'm 69 years old. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I was going to say <laughs> at, I was going to say maybe 36 or so, but, <laughs> <laughs> but oh only because you already told me you're not 21, but that's... <laughs> yes, yes. I gave it away. Just like I do with all my punchlines. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I will be 41 this this month, actually. Happy birthday early, right? Thank you, yes. It's later this <laughs> Libra. month. Libra, yeah. 
Libra, the scales. Right, I right, and indecisiveness. <laughs> okay, that's cool. Man yeah, many, many exes didn't appreciate my indecisiveness, but you know. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Do you do jokes about being indecisive? Um, I don't, but you know, now maybe I should. <laughs> but I'm not sure. Maybe I should. <laughs> you can think about it. <laughs> <laughs> I will weigh it. Yeah. <laughs> so you say you're the best thing to come out of Florida. So you were born and raised and grew up there? Uh, yes, uh, I was born in Miami, uh, uh, lived there till I was 18, went to college at, in Central Florida at the University of Central Florida. Um, but it's a very low bar to say that I'm the best thing to come out of Florida because that's, it's Florida. It's, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean, uh, not to get political here, but, you know, Trump claims residency in Florida and that's, you know, <laughs> I like to think I'm a little bit, you know. <laughs> About I that. remember the good old days when Trump was a verb. <laughs> yes, and that was it. And that, you know. <laughs> now look at things. They done you know. messed that up. <laughs> I lived in Florida for a couple times in my life. Vero Beach. I lived in Fort Myers. Oh, very nice. Oh, Fort Myers is great. Yeah, that west coast of Florida is so beautiful. It's um, the Gulf Coast is just. The beaches are nicer and less crowded and just very clean and it, I, yeah. Like Sanibel Island and oh, the whole, yes. all of those. Yeah. yeah. So talk to me about, I know I interviewed you before and me or my tech person or between the two of us, we managed to lose. Your file went to somewhere in Egypt. Okay. <laughs> we don't know where it went, but in the military, they call it bum F. Right, right. I, yes. <laughs> I know that one. File 13 did. We don't know. So this is a redo. But I've interviewed like over 500 people. So I can't remember everything about you, you know. But I remember everything Betty McPillicuddy did to me on the playground in first grade. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, those formative years, those are what, you know, the bullies are what you remember there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Significant events. Right. So, Talk to me about growing up and finding out you were funny, or were you always the one with the, the timing and the wisecracks? You know, I, I I always liked trying to be funny. Um, I it was interesting in uh, Hebrew school when I was in grade school. Um, mm -hmm. I just remember this girl telling me she said, uh, "This guy's really funny," and then to me she said. You're also funny. You're not as funny as he is, but you're also very funny. And I, I, I took that to mean, oh, okay, I'm the second funniest person in my Hebrew class. So, <laughs> and I went with it. And I don't know if I should have, but you know, it it, <laughs> it inspired me. And uh, you know, this is around the time uh, uh, Seinfeld first came on, and just all you know, the stand up was becoming big. And I was like, you know what, the, I may never make any money but i would like to try to do this <laughs> just this is so, good so this girl told you was she hot <laughs> I mean, yeah yeah i mean i think i at that point and for a very long time i just assumed you know i was everyone was out of my league and i was kind of a late bloomer um and i still got the impression well she must like this other guy that she thinks is funnier but you know it, <laughs> At least yeah. it inspired the comedy thing, yeah. <laughs> Did it, you know, like when Hertz was number two in car rental, they tried harder. They even used it as an ad. <laughs> did you try harder? I, I did, yes, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so do you owe this lady some credit for you carrying on? I, I guess I do, yes. But, and you know what? To this day, I, I hate to say it, I don't remember her name. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Michelle. I don't, you know, in, in Hebrew school, there was a lot of Rebecca's and Michelle's and, you know, Sarah's and, you know, that's <laughs> <laughs> the only time I found any other Evans, it's, which is weird because it's a Welsh name, but it's very popular in the Jewish community. So. Yes, it is. And it's yeah. Welsh. I did right. not know that. Yeah. Yeah. I found that out. A um, uh, family friend who is Welsh was like, you know, your name is from here from what whales? I was like, all right, well, you know, we Jewish people like it, so. 
That's amazing because I I've heard of a lot of Evans who are Jewish. Yeah, it's it's you know. <laughs> and that that's so true. So you were spotted by this girl as being funny also, and <laughs> so at home were you encouraged or discouraged to be funny? I was encouraged, um, it, and it's funny. Like my dad was very funny, but he uh, he had a lot of like very dark jokes and dark humor. And I was like, you know, that's that's great, but I kind of want to not necessarily do just that. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You so know, dark humor is cool and everything. There's a, and some people love it, but it's a good way to alienate yourself in most circles, right? Right, right. I don't, um, I, I don't think if I had done all of that dark humor that I got from him, that would have gone over well, because there is a lot of very un-PC kind of stuff. Yes, yes. So where did he get his dark humor from? What you was know, I don't story? know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I don't know. I just, I, I remember him making just so many uh, dark jokes that, you know, half the people would laugh, half the people would cringe. Um, I used to produce a comedy show at a bar um, in Brooklyn, and my parents came up once to see it. And I, I remember he was so uh, taken with the one comic who did so much dark humor that I was like, yes, of course my dad likes this guy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Isn't that fun when your family or supporters come and, and they pull towards somebody else? <laughs> that guy was so good. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, all right, I, you know, I, by proxy, my dad liked my comedy show. <laughs> yes. I know a, a New York comic, and when she invites people to shows, she'll say, how did you like it? And usually they'll, they'll say, oh, the room was really nice. I like the carpet, <laughs> anything but. <laughs> right. <laughs> so weird yeah i know i i i got lucky one night and i got onto um danger fields and there were maybe uh oh, nice. six people there including our table of four and and so i was speaking to like two people that didn't know me and it was, it was like two or three years ago so my comedy sucked so bad and i was trying i was trying to bring it home and <laughs> I got done and I made the mistake of asking my table how I did. You know, uh, if, you, if you ask how you did, you know you suck. Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> right, right. Do you're that. looking for that validation that you know you're not getting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just want them to, to pat you on the back and tell you it was okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't hardly ever get any kudos to anything until the last like six, seven months, really. <laughs> Well, it, you know, and it, I, I, I don't know if you find this, I found that a lot of uh, when I thought I bombed, that's when I would get, oh, hey, that was pretty good. And when I thought I did well, and they're like, I'm glad you thought you did well, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny too. So like, let's go into you decide, you went to college at University of Central Florida. What was your major? Uh, journalism. Which in hindsight, I mean, that was sort of on the cusp of when journalism was becoming completely digital. And I, I think the programs just weren't ready for that yet. So, you know, there was one like elective offbeat course where you could learn how to do online journalism, but everything else was print. And I, I feel like if I had known, now, known then what I know now, <laughs> I would have taken something that was a little more, you know, lucrative. <laughs> Yes. So in college, were you always like cracking jokes, hanging out and making people laugh or studying real seriously? And um, what, I, what? I mean, I was kind of a, a shy nerd, as I've been most of my life, if it doesn't surprise anyone. But I, um, I tried to be funny and I tried, uh, I, I ended up uh, working on an upstart school magazine um, oh. called The Independent. And I tried to write as much humor as I could and I think that you know I was like I was still too shy to do in-person IRL as they say comedy but I was happy to try to write stuff nice that's really cool 
So in your comedy life, that took, I want to get into why you went into comedy in a second, but sure. right now, like in your comedy, did you do a lot of heavy writing of comedy for yourself and others? Uh, mo mostly for myself, um, okay. not really for others, but uh, yeah, I uh, just, it was kind of thing, you know, as, as people do where I would just have like a notepad around and I would just, wherever I was, okay, something happened or I'm about to fall asleep, wait, let me, let me write that out. Yes, yes. So talk to me, Evan, about, I know you already told me this last time I interviewed you and lost the video. So talk to me about growing up and your dad having a dark sense of humor and you go and you're a journalism major at UCF and now you're doing comedy. Something happened in between, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th you know, I just, by the, by the time I graduated college, I was getting more, you know, being a journalism major, you, you still have to go out and do stories, um, which by the way, uh, it's fantastic when you have to go around and ask people for quotes and they're like, oh, what magazine you're with or what newspaper? And you're like, oh no, this is just for my class. And they're like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> you know, <laughs> nobody cares that you're from, you're doing this for your class. Um, but I, uh, I, I started to get out of my shell a little more and I thought, you know what, I, I always wanted to do comedy. I'm going to, I can move to New York or LA. I moved to New York. Um, I want, I got into improv and to me that was easier because I wasn't by myself on stage while it wasn't easy. It was just easier, but it, um, yeah. And then eventually I was like, let me try to find, let me try to get into standup. Talk to me about your improv time. I want to hear about that. So it was, um, I, I guess, kind of somewhat early on with uh, UCB. Uh, I went, uh, it's about 2004, I want to say. Um, I'm old. And, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, I went through the classes and it was just, I was hooked. It was great. It was so much fun. And, uh, my last class there was a performance class. Um, we tried to do what uh, they would call, you know, improv tragedy as sort of try to like, let's make it as dark as possible. I guess coming back to my dad's humor that he imparted um, and uh, let's make it dark and make people laugh almost uncomfortably <laughs> at stuff. Uh, and it was fun. We did that for a couple of years. Um, I, and I ended up in other, I, I was in something called the Hebrew School Dropouts, which was an all Jewish group, uh, Star Trek, in, which was a Star Trek themed improv group. It was just the, you know, just having all this experience with improv, it was so much fun and the themes were fun. And, uh, but at some point I was like, I, I don't, you know, I don't know where this is going. Let me try stand up, um, which hasn't really led to anything <laughs> other than just doing stand up, you know, but um, it, it definitely got me more um, confident in being on stage to now be on stage by myself. Yes, absolutely. I get it. You know, I, I was in a, an improv group and the improv leader was like a drill sergeant yelling oh. at us and I, I don't, I don't work that way. I was in the military. Those days are over. I right, don't... right. Well, they get, they get very, I mean, they get very serious about it and I respect that, but it's also, it's, you're either, this works for you or it doesn't. And yeah. Yes. So the improv taught you certain skills that may have given you a jump ahead of others starting on stand up in stand up. And in some other ways, it might have made it difficult to transition. So can you speak a little bit to how it helps and how it hinders jumping into comedy next? Well, it uh, so it definitely um, prepared me for being on stage and being in front of people, which, again, I was very introverted and shy before that, and it was quite a transition. But uh, it does prepare you for... You know, you go on with stand up with your script, and it, it, I think it helps you keep it fresh and keep it not sounding like you're just regurgitating the same things over and over again. And, you know, I've never been good with crowd work, but, you know, it definitely helps with any kind of spontaneity with any type of uh, 
things you you didn't predict would happen people yelling out or stuff like you know heckling and stuff like that um again i wouldn't say that, pardon me that i'm <laughs> great at uh you know crowd stuff and hecklers but it's you know it definitely helps to know how to have to think of something on the spot to talk to people about so can you speak a little bit to things that happened on the spot that you uh, that are funny that you dealt with and now you look back and go wow i'm proud or wow i can't believe i did that <laughs> um, well i have so i have clinical obsessive compulsive disorder ocd and i do that i talk about that in my uh, my stand up. And sometimes I think because, you know, the stories I'll tell, I think are funny in hindsight, but sometimes people will just be kind of taken aback or shocked. And I, I, you know, I've had people in the audience be like, Whoa, that's really messed up. And they're just like, you're right. It is. I don't know what else to tell you, <laughs> but it's okay to laugh, please. <laughs> So what is some things that you've said that were, you got that reaction? Um, so I, you know, just- I know you're uh, not ready for that question. And, I'm, and if you don't want to speak to it, just say next question. Okay, no, no, that's <laughs> fine. Um, I, um, it's, you know, I had a bit, uh, which I, which was based on a real thing that I had in college with my OCD that um, I called baby finger death. And it was the idea that like, I have to have clean hands when I went to bed at night because somebody might break in, put my fingers in a baby's mouth and get the, and the baby would be sick. And it was the idea being that your OCD just gets so much worse and worse that like, once you solve one thing, you have like, I'm like, okay, I might go to bed with dirty hands and I, I'm, I can deal with it. But now what, what is something worse than that, that I have to worry about now? So um, you know, I'm not, I'm not doing the, uh, wording from the bit as, uh, well. yeah. but so I, I, I did that. And I, I think I said it's some show, um, where I said, you know, I'm sorry, I, I realized that's really messed up. And somebody yelled, yeah, that really is <laughs> like, <laughs> like, no, 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 but it's a joke. It's a joke. Um, uh, <laughs> so, um, and I actually, uh, I remember doing my OCD stuff at a, <laughs> I, I will say this, at a, a show that was an all Jewish show. And I, 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 after the show, I had so many psychiatrists giving me their cards. Wow. <laughs> like, uh, 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 <laughs> like, wow, that's, okay, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> uh, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So how long have you been doing comedy? Um. I would say probably about 12 years now. Wow. That's a real commitment. I've been in six, a little over six and a half. And I think I, I've quit every month. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we all have. That's definitely, um, you know, I was saying before, well, for a few months before the pandemic, I, um, I, I was on hiatus and I wanted to start getting back to it. Now it's, it's kind of like, it's hard to get back to it when now everything is, is, you know, online and it's, it, so I'm writing with the hopes to getting back to it. Yes, it's so different now. So yeah, different. It's, it's, um, you know, I, I, I went to, went to, as I say, a friend's Zoom show uh, last night and it was the first time I had watched a, a Zoom comedy show and it's just, it really is, um, you want to be an active audience member because it, I, I, I have not done stand up online and I can't imagine just getting almost zero reaction because people have their mute, they're muted on zoom. And it's, you know, not that I haven't had zero reaction, but just because I bombed, not because yes. it's on the computer. <laughs> yes. I remember doing, I've done maybe, I don't know, a couple handfuls of zoom mics and shows and I've gotten to a place where I can get laughs and I'm like, really? That's getting a laugh. You <laughs> yeah. gotta be kidding me. You guys must be really hungry for humor. <laughs> no, it means you're doing really well. That's, you know, that's, um, cause people, I, I feel like people in a regular audience don't feel obligated to, you know, laugh or build you up and on online, if they're laughing, you're doing well, you're doing something. Cause <laughs> 
Now watch me get in front of a live audience in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Give me the Zoom. Give me the Zoom. <laughs> I'm all messed up now. So, um, I had. What's the funniest thing that like the di- what funniest thing you had to say about the difference with you being Jewish? doing comedy for fellow Jews versus you being Jewish doing comedy at any old club in New York City for a mixed group? Like what, there's gotta be some funniness in there. Um, you know, the, I, I think the main thing is try not to go do all the same kind of stereotype jokes. Um, you know, don't just go up and talk about your, your mother being overbearing or, you know, stuff like that. Um, and, I, but, I, but it's funny because I, I feel like the predominantly Jewish audiences still kind of want that because it's sort of a we're in this together kind of thing where other audiences want to hear something new and different that you haven't necessarily uh, spoken about. Um, which, you know, now that I think of it, I'm like, what have I done with that? You know, um, I, I think, part you know, partly... Uh, where my uh, my mother converted, so it was you know I had I had a, a Orthodox Jewish psychiatrist tell me that um, she's not really Jewish, and I was like, "You're my psychiatrist. You're criticizing my family to me while I'm you know in a session." <laughs> um, and yeah, no, <laughs> you know I uh, I talk about my my I had a Star Trek thing in bar mitzvah. It's <laughs> Where is it? I, I got that we had shirts that said I got beamed up to Evans Bar Mitzvah. Um, <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's uh, in New York, you never know. It's it's usually a pretty good mix of, of everybody. So, uh, you know, I I think one of my bits was that because uh, I've been married twice and both my wives were um, Christian or Catholic and You know, I said that I have no problem with them having put the furniture together. I'm not very good at it. Also, we've had one Jewish carpenter and we saw what happened to him, you know. (laughs) And and then that's my my interfaith joke kind of thing. Yes, yes. So your mother was not considered Jewish by some people in the Jewish community. By the Orthodox standards, right. Uh, As... um, if you're, but also if you're reformed Jewish, which I am, which is kind of like you, you know, you practice the high holy days and that's about it. And um, then you're just, you're not considered a legitimate Jew. Um, this same psychiatrist, by the way, I said, it was uh, when I was on dating sites and I was I said, I was on J day and he said, well, you're just fooling these women. I'm like, J date allows for different all different levels of Judaism. So like I'm not I'm not trying to pull one over. I, I've identified what level of Judaism I am. Oh my gosh. That's a hard liner there. I you know, I was ba- so I was basically like this one session, just give me my prescription for my meds and I will never <laughs> see it again. Totally. Yeah, I have so much personal pain from being judged. I know this isn't funny but i i've tried to make it funny that when you're like my father was a hundred percent my mother was 50 it was just the wrong 50 her mother wasn't so technically mathematically i'm 75 percent jewish but rabbinically or whatever i'm a goose egg you know yeah it's it's it's, it's a rough standard that they they set for it the maternal versus paternal thing and yeah 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 that so. i i mean honestly in this day and age i just i feel like look you are what you believe and that's it that's, yeah i i believe i'm i'm black like sammy davis <laughs> you know that's one a really one. bad joke right now <laughs> the no, no. you know it i you know we're we're very proud that's you know <laughs> <laughs> we're so glad that he joined us yes, he, yes. he legitimized us right right, right. made us current <laughs> <laughs> made us trend for a while <laughs> right <laughs> oh my gosh so 
Your, what is it that you feel are the biggest accomplishments in your comedy of 12 years? And what is it you have not been able to do yet that you want to crack wide open? Um, I, you know, I, I've, as far as accomplishments, I mean, I, I was in a, a Jewish stand-up uh, contest. I placed third. I think it was only five. Is that, is that but, funniest Jew of New York City? <laughs> no, oh no, I don't think they phrased it like that because that would have been really rough. That, um, <laughs> you know, just, uh, just Jewish stand-up. You know, um, Congratulations! And, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I just I, I liked. I liked producing, I think, almost more than performing. I, I feel like, I, you know, not to pat myself on the back, but I feel like I have a pretty good eye for comedy. And I'd go to open mics and I'd write people's names down and I'd be, I, you know, I'd reach out and be like, you have to do my show, you know, like this is, and yeah. that, that, that to me was always very rewarding that, especially seeing some of these comics go on to other things. Um, what I, would like to do more is first get back into it <laughs> in spite of our, you know, what's going on right now and uh, just write more. You know, I, I, I like writing and I like, uh, you know, I want to uh, write more comedy and, and like, but like show web shows and, and podcasts and things like that. Now talk to me about your podcast and what you accomplish on your YouTube. What is, where can I go for what with you? Uh, so the YouTube is EvanJN02. Um, I got that uh, idea for the name for my cousins back in the AOL era where they was like their initials or their name with whenever they graduated, which now makes me seem really old. And <laughs> Very uh, old. <laughs> 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 yeah, forget about it. Um, and uh, the podcast, and we actually we're kind of taking a break from it. My my friend Darren Patterson and I, and he has a good podcast, SNL Nerds, which you should check out. And uh, our podcast was The Virgin Chronicles, which uh, was we had uh, basically comics and other performers would come on. And we'd ask them about a first time experience and it was up to them, whatever they, uh, first time, first job, first time doing drugs. It could be first time having sex, whatever it was, their story. And we would go from there and we would discuss it. And it was a lot of fun. Um, we have so, a lot of episodes. That... So tell me again, cause I was trying to write your friend, what's his name again? Uh, Darren Patterson. He's like a co-partner in a podcast that you did with do with him. Right, right. And, and he it's lives called in New Jersey. SNL Nerds. So like yes, Saturday that's his Nerds. his other podcast that he cheats on me with. And you're on it with him. No, no, that that podcast is just his. I just you know figured I'd. I'd Give him a shout out. I, nice. I'll plug that. And then Virgin <laughs> Chronicles is your podcast. It's on a hiatus right now. Right, right. Yeah. But there's we, a um, lot of episodes to binge on. Oh, we, yeah, we did it for a couple of years. We, um, we would do two every month and, uh, we produced the live show with this. Um, wow. and, uh, yeah, we had, we had a lot of, a lot of good people on and a lot of good stories. And that was where people who had experienced something that, or were recalling something that they did for right. the first time. With, so you right, wide right. You first, first, right, exactly. First time with almost anything. You know. What's the funniest thing anybody ever got on there and talked about? Um, we, had a, we had a couple of comics um, talking about uh, their stripping days or prostitution days. And you know, I was like, I, you must be very confident that the people who don't want to hear about this are not listening, <laughs> but, which was actually pretty, I mean, that's pretty spot on, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we had, um, cause we had some people first time they got arrested or, uh, you know, we had, we had people's first vacations and then we had people who got arrested or we had people who, um, Whenever the topic of drugs came up, it was almost always people wanted to talk about acid and the first acid trip they took. Um, 
because I guess, you know, th there's a lot of similarities in first time you uh, smoked weed or something, but acid trips are very unique. <laughs> wow. I, if I came on, I'd want to talk about the first time I got up on stage. You know, did oh, people yeah. talk about that? Oh, we, we had some of those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, definitely everybody's experience is something unique for that, for sure. What's the craziest story you ever heard of? the first time somebody was on stage doing any kind of comedy um wow you know i'm thinking back it's been a little while but um i i think it's just a lot of people when their families were in the audience that um you know that they were talking about stuff that they were not prepared for their family to hear it was <laughs> that's, a, that's a lot of i think the uh hearing people's families reactions which are hilarious yeah <laughs> that, that can be hilarious and scary too so your youtube you went through uh something o2 evan something o2 what uh, is that again uh evan jm02 and that's the name of your youtube channel right right if i haven't subscribed i will sure and i'll go and li i'll be start binging on your podcast and i'll i'll mention all three. Oh, thank you no uh I don't, the podcast, yeah, I was going to say the podcast, yeah, that that's on um, SoundCloud and uh, iTunes. It was, uh, yeah, and we did it at various venues. We did, you know, the idea was at some point to try to get a crowd, which we never really got a lot of crowds, but it, you know, we still had a good energy for it. Um, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching it. Thank I you. feel like I've gotten to know you a little bit, you know, better. And so it's going to make it interesting for me to watch your podcast. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> it's hard to watch a podcast when you don't really know the players. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah. That's. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So I've walked around New York City. This is just me at the end kind of getting ready to wrap up. But I've walked around New York City and I've seen billboards of who's appearing tonight on this stage at different clubs and i've seen your name on billboards haven't i um you know i um i, I was never necessarily passed at clubs but i i definitely had a lot of uh you know uh, bringers and and you know new talent night kind of things and you know i i would get guest spots um so i did yeah i did some stuff that at clubs where i just felt like wow how am i even here you know this is um Absolutely. That's great. Absolutely. So on your YouTube, do you have your comedy there for people to watch? I do. I do. Book you? <laughs> I do. Yeah. You booked. I have. Okay. Thank you. No, I have a, uh, I have some stand up there. I mean, most of it's, uh, goes back a few years, but it's, it's, you know, yeah. The, the various clubs around New York and, uh, yeah. I mean, I would say, uh, I don't necessarily do topical stuff. So a lot of the comedy is still pretty much the same, you know. Yes. Um, you know, personal stuff. Cool, that's what's really hot right now is, all, you know, opening up and being visceral about your own life so no one can steal it, you know. Right, right, right. That's, you know, I, I realized at a certain point where I used to be, I was so closed in about my OCD up, you know, through college to where I was finally like, you know, this is actually, if I want to do comedy, this is material. This is some crazy stuff. And I and it's it's like a catharsis to do it on stage and include people in, you know, my my stand-up comedy therapy sessions, basically. Yes. There's some topics that just don't work on stage, you know, about your own right. life, you know, like uh you know, I got hit by a drunk driver in 1996 and I have a brain injury. And that is the people love me on stage i walk up on stage they laugh before i even talk you know there's something about me that people just go ah hell she's gonna be funny oh for sure and, yeah, then, I, and then and they love me like you know yeah. and and then i say i got hit by a drunk driver and then all the air leaves the room and i can't uh, get them yeah. to laugh at, at this. i might as well talk about the holocaust you know well no you know it's 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 hard when it's um something that you've re you've gotten to a place in your life where you find it funny but maybe they're not, you know, they're not there yet. You, you know, it's, it's hard to uh, build it up and get it to the right place. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. Like, it's almost like you want to say, okay, 
today is, uh, you know, and then you tell them the date and they say, this is the premise of a joke I want to tell you. <laughs> I got hit by a drunk driver in 1996. And then say, okay, I'm not going to tell you the punchline for about 16 years because it took me that long. To think it was funny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I like that. I don't want to put the pressure on you guys to laugh. So you don't <laughs> nice. get to hear the punchline. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> nice. I don't know. So you get to have a few minutes to do anything you want here as a final wrap up, whether that's talk about the Meshugana life we're living as Americans right. without being political, like how difficult this has been for you or others, or funny observations in a terrible time make us laugh about anything going on or tell us what you want to accomplish before you kick the bucket <laughs> anything you want to say to people right now um i think you know just uh you know we are we are in this together but we're also going through it in different ways and uh you know it's fun when it first started i because my friends know i have ocd that they were this must be horrible for you i'm like on, a, on the one hand, yes. On the other hand, I've been preparing for this my whole life. <laughs> I have all the sanitizer and all the wipes and, you know, now everyone has to be on my page, you know? <laughs> so it's like, so I, you know, I had people joke like, did you cause this just to get everyone to think like you do? <laughs> like, no, but now people get it. <laughs> That's, um, That's so, and, and it's, it's weird because I, I think because I was already in that mindset, I was like, I, you know, I worry about getting the flu or a cold. And so it's hard to feel that same way. Like I'm either going to catch something that's going to kill me or not, but I don't want to be uncomfortable and sick while it happens, you know? Yes, uh, absolutely. I wish that, you know, if we're going to die, I wish we'd get something and, and die in our sleep and not even know, but this right, thing seems right. to be like progressive and takes forever. And Right, definitely. right, yeah. You don't, you definitely don't want that the way that they were, you know, describing it. And, um, and I, you know, it's funny. I just, I when I moved to New Jersey about a year ago, I moved in with my sister and nephews. And your level of OCD after just living with a roommate or a partner to when you're living with kids, kids don't know. They are just gross. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of like immersion therapy. It was like. All right, now you're going to live in a place where um, these uh, small people, uh, you know, sneeze and cough on everything and don't care. Go. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, true. That is true. Oh my gosh, that would be a whole nother level of worry. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but now it's kind of like, well, you know, pe people are worried because they're like, if we get back to being out in public more. Um, all our immune systems are like shot, but I'm like, I, I feel like mine was shot anyway because of my OCD. So, you know, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah. And you're right. We're all of us are either going to get it or not. Remember right. the old time comics that would, I don't know if it was Jackie Vernon or Jackie Mason. It was like, if you're going to get, I think it was Mason. He's like, either going to get it or you're not going to get it. If you get it, then you're going to either die or you're not going to die. Now if you die. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I love that. That's great. <laughs> it's like, why worry is the point. Right. You know, right. Case or raw, whatever it's going to be. Yeah. Gonna be. Don't sweat the small stuff. Yeah. So the world hasn't opened up fully in New York or New Jersey yet. Right. To any degree has it? Uh, a little bit there. I, I, they tried to do a slow opening a few months ago and it didn't work and they're trying to do it again. Um, they have like outdoor dining and they're trying to do limited indoor dining now. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how it goes. You know, it's, uh, it definitely makes it harder to try to date right now because, you know, there's only so much, how, so much just chatting over the internet or text messages before you're just like, okay, um we don't know if we have any physical chemistry and at this point we may never so, you know, it's, That's so um, true. yeah so true i know when i go to the grocery store it's you know like everybody's been shut in their rooms and like they're doing without and i go to sneak into the grocery store 
And it's so scary going and looking for bananas when everybody else is horny, including me. <laughs> <laughs> this banana looks so good. <laughs> How much a pound? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think the um, the toy industry must be going like all over the place right now. They're just. <laughs> I know Sebastian Maniscalco daily he gets on the internet to say this stuff his wife orders on Amazon he opens up packages I think it's funny the different things people do order in a time like this oh yeah yeah and it I, I feel like initially when this first started that was kind of all the grocery stores were empty so it was kind of like you're ordering food and the basics of life from Amazon yes yes what happened to the good old days when Amazon was the lady on the cover of National Geographic with the children? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Amazon uh. lady. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, it's been lovely having you back for the second time to re-interview you. Oh, thank you so much. I've had a great time. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I'm learning to edit myself the stuff. The oh, stuff sure. Myself. <laughs> So when it winds up on my space, you'll know why. <laughs> I'm sure there's an empty page I had once. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get to it, but I don't even know what I'm doing yet. I'm taking classes once a week and I have to figure out how to edit and right. render and upload and these yeah. things, you know. Oh yeah, no, like I. A millennial. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I had a podcast when I was doing that. I was like, I, it's so much. It's just, it was worth it to pay somebody a little bit of money to handle the stuff that I knew I was gonna mess up. Yes, well, you know, like a thousand a month was huge for me to get right. in my That's wallet. Lot, yeah. And so I haven't found anybody that could do it for a song, you know. Right. But, right. But yeah, so I'm gonna I guess I'm gonna give a try. If not, the lady that's trying to teach me, I'll say, "Could you do me a favor and put me out of the misery?" <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Hope she doesn't shoot me. So. Well. <laughs> <laughs> thank I you so you. much, Evan. You're oh, thank a doll. You. Thank you. I couldn't it's wait to re-interview you. Oh, thank, thank you. So you. I was I was so excited to be back, and thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. And you guys, when you're watching this show. This is Evan Morgenstern. And tell me, go back and watch. This is the kind of person every mother wishes she would have given <laughs> birth to. He's such a doll. So kind. You've seen how, you know, I've had people on here, I ask them a question and they're like, what kind of stupid question is that? Oh, not, no. not Evan. Evan is <laughs> respectful. So, oh, yeah. thank you. I, you know, you're yeah, wonderful. You're, and, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So I'll let you go. I usually say goodbye about 15 times like, on watch. <laughs> <laughs> it's an old lady thing. Thank you so much, Evan. Oh, thank you. Love you lots. Stay Love safe. you too. Everybody's